How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. I am tired today. We had a house party last night at the Zarian compound. Fascinating people showed up. <laughs> I'll just lay, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to incriminate anybody. Uh, I think everybody was suffering this morning, but it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. We watched Collision, which is always a weird thing to do at a at a party. But there was enough people that are involved in wrestling in some capacity that were here, so we watched Collision. Uh, it was it was I had a I had a great time watching Collision. I thought it was a really good show. We're gonna talk about SmackDown today. I really liked SmackDown this week. They did a lot of foreshadowing. They did a lot of setting up. It was very storyline driven. We had a debut. Roman returned. It was a really interesting SmackDown with uh, three matches, I guess, set up for Roman. At least. We'll talk about that. NXT versus AEW was this week. Title Tuesday for AEW. A lot of people were losing their minds over this. The numbers, the numbers, the counter-programming, the numbers. Uh, Tony Khan's tweets also will touch on that a little bit. Cause a stir. And everything else. I, I This was a really interesting week when it came to news, when it came to results, when it came to the future of wrestling in 2024. I want to hear from you guys. Tweet me. Andrew Zarian, let me know what you thought of this week in professional wrestling. When we come back, we're going to break all of this down for you. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Let's go into the news. A little Sunday news here. I know we've said the CM Punk Vortex was over, and then it returned for a week. When there were report reports coming out that him and WWE were in talks. Uh, the people from the punk side were expecting something to happen where punk would return. That was the report. I heard the same stuff you guys heard. I had really no inside info other than, uh, you know, there are some people that think they would benefit by having him, but there's a lot of other people that think they don't benefit from this. WWE decides against hiring him. This comes out after last week's report that the two sides were talking. Does talking mean negotiating? Does it mean just a quick conversation? I don't know. But this is per Dave in The Observer. The decision was a no. He wanted to go there, and the decision was a no. I mean, it could always change, which it can, by the way. Th these, listen, uh, it, it, things always change. There, there have been tons of moments that you thought it was the end of somebody in that company, and eventually they return. In some capacity. Decision was a no, says Dave. He wanted to go there, and the decision was a no. And I mean, it could always change, and it was brought up to me that there was no such thing as no forever when it comes to WWE, but it's a no for now. Listen, I, I a lot of this probably has to do with what does this do to their creative? Which we'll talk about, because that's a big hot topic this week. How would this impact AEW, WWE's creative? How would this impact the morale? How would this impact the um, uh, just the perception of CM Punk coming back post-Endeavor merger? If you're a punk, you definitely want to go back now. You know, Things are shuffled around a little bit. You have some star power coming out of AEW. WWE is big into the optics of hurting AEW at this point by acquiring top people like Cody and Jade and whoever else. More to come, I'm willing to bet. Very, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's an easy bet to take. You can kind of guess some people that could be... Uh, could fit in well there. But Punk was, a, Punk was the big question here. I, I, listen, I think he's a... Outside of his, you know, personal issues, I think he's a great TV character. And we've seen the, uh, the effect on AEW TV and AEW's ticket sales. 
I know there's a lot of contrarians out there. I know there's a lot of people out there that will that will compare the quarter hours and that'll say, well, he didn't really do too much to the number and the number was stable. Listen, I I, I get what you're I get it, right? But the numbers really don't always tell the story. The overall big picture story here was he was a merch juggernaut for the company. He was a pay-per-view draw. He was a house show draw. He was a TV draw, depending on what program he was in. But, you know, unfortunately, everything happened that happened. And sometimes you can't, you gotta, you can't move on. Or you have to move on. You can't, you can't continue to work. So I thought this was interesting. I thought, I'm glad that this is over and we can kind of move on. Uh, for now, MG, I'm sure that this will pop up in another two, three weeks where CM Punk is, you know, talking to somebody. Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want this over I just, with? I I just yeah, it's just it's drawn out for me, man. Um, and yeah. as far as him going to WWE right now, look at all the star power they have. They have a lot of hot stars at the top of that card. They don't yeah. really need him right now. You know, you look at Cody. You look at heck, even Jey Uso and uh, mm-hmm. Seth Rollins. And this is outside of Roman Reigns. They have enough star power right now. I don't think he helps. I think it. it I think. That's where they landed is, you know, at the end of the day, he's probably going to um, ruffle more feathers than we want right now. I'm sure. You know? yeah, listen, that that top tier in AEW, WWE right now is very hot. They have a really uh, big upper mid car to, 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 you know, star positioning Main in event, that company. Yeah, yeah they, uh, it, it's, they don't it's interesting it. because we mm-hmm. talk about this regularly, right? We talk about where every... I want to say 18 months or so, WWE has no opponents for their champion. We were talking about this about Roman. Who does Roman have left that could be believable in beating him? Who's left? You know, you're kind of creating oh. the not so much who's going to beat Roman, but who's who's in that position to challenge for the title post-Roman really well right now, which we'll talk about. Maybe it has something to do with this. Triple H has been given all control of WWE creative. This is per Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter this week. Our very own Dave Meltzer. Vince McMahon is currently out of the process, but the term is at the moment. That was stressed by Meltzer. And it's possible McMahon's involvement could change in the future. Since the merger, Vince's title of executive chairman could possibly mean his focus is elsewhere. You know, you could tell by looking at TV that they're doing different things now. Ciampa, DIY. This was a group that should have been dominant on that tag team positioning when they came up. They came up, they went back down, they came up. I think we all agree that Hunter's a better booker. He's a better storyteller at this point. Raw was eh. You know, it's always, I have I have such difficulty with that show. Even when it's really good, it's still a difficult show for me to watch. I don't know if it's the Monday thing now. You know, people change, times change. I'm getting older. I know you're impressed by the muscles, MG. I know you're staring. These muscles are glued on at this point. <laughs> Whatever's left, oh. it's depleting very quickly. I'm 40. I'm turning 40. Everything changes, guys. But for me, you know, Mondays are a difficult night to watch wrestling. Wednesdays are a better night. Fridays are a better night. Saturdays I love. But we could all agree that the show isn't this hot property, Raw. Compared to SmackDown, SmackDown was on fire. But again, this is creative changes that are going to start happening. And Raw could become that again. If you don't do the dumb stuff. But I think this is a positive. I think this is a great positive for them. Uh, overall. To have Hunter, you know. And there's, there's cohesiveness now with NXT. We were talking about how Ring of Honor is canon to AEW. That's how it was described to me by people within AEW. That... Listen, Ring of Honor is not its own. They're not, they're not the island of misfit toys here for us, okay? We don't treat it like that. They're, in, in, they're engraved in AEW. I guess that's why we have so much confusion about this December pay-per-view. Is it the 29th? Is it the 30th? I will tell you, there is a pay-per-view in December. The original date I was told was the 29th. And that they were running the New York market. Now, again, I don't know the venue. Then there was a lot of conversation happening around, well, it could be final battle. 
and it could be the Hammerstein Ballroom, which there is, outside of the garden, there's no better venue that I want to go to. That is the venue. I don't care. I'll pay a high ticket price for those tickets, and I'll go to the Hammerstein. Every, I've never seen a bad show at the Hammerstein, including music. Awesome venue. However, that changed. Mike Johnson put out a report. I, was it Mike Johnson? I, I don't want to. I don't want to. It was PW Insider. I believe it was. Yes, it was Mike. Uh, mm -hmm. And listen, Mike's very good. Okay, he knows his stuff. I had a great conversation about about the Mets with him. Uh, Mike said the thirtieth. If that's a Saturday, where are they running? That's New Year's Eve weekend. That's a busy weekend. You don't have too many venues open. If you're going to run a show in New York, it would most likely have to be the, the Coliseum if it's like an AEW pay-per-view. Just based on availability, what's available, what's not. They're not running the Garden. They're not running Barclays. UBS, I think, has an event. I mean, they could run a small event at the Hammerstein. That would be great. But the only other venue in New York, if it, again, if this is what... I'm being, I can't confirm this outside of like the same people that heard the same thing, you know? So I'm not, I'm not going into this as a report, but I would say if you're looking at venues here in New York, and I know we got 30 seconds here, I would say the Nassau Coliseum is probably the only one really open that you could run. Billy Joel's running the night after on the 31st, which I would love to be there. Can you imagine ringing in the, the new year with Billy Joel singing a very sad song? Maybe it's a New York thing. I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. Uh, but, I mean, if that's the case, you could do something cool. Listen, we'll touch on this a little bit when we come back from break here. Because I, I want to I get your thoughts on this. Can they run it? Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Man, you know that hair of the dog helped. I guess, do you call it a hair of the dog if you, 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 you need that little, little wake up at later on in the day? <laughs> It's not a Bloody Mary. I was, oh, man, I should have had a Bloody Mary this morning. That would, have, that, would have, that would have fixed everything in my life. Wrestling Observer Live here. Let's continue this conversation here from the last segment. Uh, you know, the December pay-per-view. Sum it up. Originally, I heard the 29th. Then I heard the 30th. Then I heard the New York market. Uh, and then now we're in a big game of guessing where that venue is. I mean, listen, some of that is, is process of elimination. You, you go on these websites uh, for the venues and you see if they're running an event, if they're available. If they're not available, then you know that you could cross them off your list. Other ones obviously won't, won't, won't take AEW because of you know, deals. I don't, now, I don't know if MSG has that deal or, or Barclays has that deal, but I'm willing to bet if AEW could have run the Garden, they would have run the Garden by now, especially in their hottest period. However, the Nassau Coliseum is a natural story here. Billy Joel's the night after. MJF is their world champion. He's a very sweet Long Island boy. Billy Joel's a very sweet Long Island boy. Captain Jack, one of my favorite songs about someone doing bad stuff in Oyster Bay. Why is my producer laughing at me about this? He, he, you know, he doesn't get the New York thing. I'm sorry. He gets very upset if I bring up New York to him. Both my producers from Michigan. We're on Sports Byline. We're international. We're on Sirius. This is a big show. I get it. I'll stop the local talk. But you got a natural story there for MJF. Closing out the year, you know? The Coliseum's a Coliseum. This is, listen, again, this is a very soft me reporting and just having a conversation. I'm not even reporting this. This is just chatter that I'm hearing. I do, listen, I would love that. Would I go New Year's, the day before New Year's Eve to the Nassau Coliseum? No, I, I, I'm not going. Maybe I should. I don't know. Should I go if it is? I'm not on the road from Chris, the day before Christmas Eve to like January 3rd. I don't go anywhere. I'm done. The year is over. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be heard. I disappear. And then I reappear in the beginning of the year. Let's talk about SmackDown. Oh, no, I'm sorry. My producer's giving me the signal here. Let's talk about NXT, Tuesday Night War, AEW, Title Tuesday. This was, um, 
I thought both shows did a lot here. 921,000 viewers per NXT was up 7.5% from last week. I, I want to remind you guys, for the longest time, whenever I spoke to people at USA, they told me if this show is doing in the mid-sixes, they're thrilled. This is a huge number. And the numbers have been huge for the last couple months. AEW did a 609, down 23%. It's not a night that they normally run. Uh, they were down from last year, but, I mean, they had some stiff competition. NXT stacked that show with appearances from John Cena, Paul Heyman, Asuka. Undertaker showed up. The American Badass. He took out Braun Breaker at the end of the show. I want to see that match. Maybe that's the match in Saudi Arabia. Braun Breaker and The Undertaker? No, please no. No? <laughs> you don't think it's so? It's just me. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to he's retired. Let, let the man be retired. He's good for these kind of segments. Bring yeah. him in. I like that retired Undertaker is just, it. you know, American badass taker now. That's, that's a retired taker. <laughs> Both shows advertised 30 minutes commercial free. AEW did a buy-in show on YouTube, which featured Minoru Suzuki and Eddie Kingston. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what was expected here. There were a lot of people that thought it would be a lot closer. I didn't. Uh, you know, when you put in a John Cena showing up on NXT, Cody showing up on NXT, NXT being hot. You're on the wrong night. You're going to have really stiff competition. 608, I, I, you know, a lot of people thought AW would do worse. I didn't, I didn't think, I, I actually, I thought it would be a little bit closer. Uh, I know WWE really wanted that million mark, though. And I think that maybe that's why Tony put that tweet out. I think he might have heard that chatter, too, that they were really... The, the expectation was a million here for a lot of people. That would have been a big number for them. 921, nothing to, nothing to be embarrassed about. That's huge. So what, what does this mean for NXT? Um... You know, if you do this regularly and you bring these guys down, you will be able to sustain pretty decent numbers because there's always the who's going to be on, right? Not everybody follows the the advertisings of who's on the show. Not everybody follows the chatter online. Most people just turn it on because they know it's on. You know, that was the thing that, that drove the, the pro wrestling business in the Attitude Era. I want to see what's going to happen next. AEW's been doing something really good with that, too. So this was interesting. Who did, what did you think? What was your expectation, MG? Did you think it would be close? Did you think it would be this number? I actually thought it was going to be about this, um, to be honest with you. Now, keep in mind, I looked this up for you at the uh, middle of the week, um, and I got you the stat. Last year, this number was flipped. This and, number was uh, flipped, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think uh, NXT did around six, and... Um, AW, I want to say did like seven, seven and a half. So they eight, gained. Yeah, essentially what happened. Yeah, so they, uh, they flipped if, it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're looking last mm -hmm. year's numbers, right? AEW, uh, NXT gained a little shy of 300,000, uh, 200,000 viewers. I'm sorry. Let me say that again. A little shy of 300,000 viewers they gained. AEW lost about 150,000 viewers. And that obviously reflects about, you know, the counter-programming that happened. I, I, you know, it was what it was. It was to be expected. But interesting. I, I, this is an interesting, and there was more of a reason why this happened. I, I think that a lot of this was a test for, for NXT to see what they could do, what kind of numbers they could do with competition. We obviously saw that they did a big number here. Would this continue? I don't think so. You know, the nostalgia runs out. The novelty of having these guys run out. Uh, a lot of people thought that The Undertaker was going to announce that he's the host for uh, Halloween Havoc. I would have loved that. You could have him come out in every segment as a different taker. <laughs> that would have been great. Instead, we're getting we're getting uh, sh uh, Shotzi again with uh, Scarlet. <laughs> are going to be the <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about SmackDown quite, here quite really quickly. <laughs> Let's go into this because I love this show. I thought it was a really good show. John Cena kicked off the show. He was interrupted by Roman Reigns. Roman returned to SmackDown. Cena then introduced LA Knight as Roman's next challenger. 
Elliot Knight comes out. He cuts his promo. The crowd is so into this dude. And, and it's, it's actually interesting because this was organic. Right? This, this L.A. Knight thing was organic. A lot of it has to do with, because he does touch on the nostalgia act. And, you know, the same could be said about what happened on Collision with Ricky, but they, they approached it in two totally different ways. L.A. Knight comes out. He does his promo. The crowd is behind him. He introduces himself to Roman. This also leads to Solo Sokoa and L.A. Knight in the main event. Okay, cool. Pretty deadly. Defeated the Brawling Brutes. I have that top, by the way. I know a lot of people are asking. <laughs> Rich and I are Matt Men. We wear the, those outfits weekly. You should check it out. You should watch us on Fridays. Triple H announces a new general manager with Adam Pierce, Getting a promotion and taking over Raw. And they introduce Nick Aldis as the new GM of SmackDown. Former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Impact Champion, right? Yep. What? Why are you nodding your head? No. No, I'm not. I don't know. No, like, are you? Do you don't want to see this? No, I do. I think it's great. I thought I loved his line when it was confronting Dominic, in where he says, "I'm a big fan." Pause of your father. <laughs> yeah. That was, so here, that here's my question: Why well. are I hope they utilize Nick Aldis as a wrestler? That's a that's a good question. I the mean, dude, I mean, he's go. Of course. And you know, you look at him, right? He's 36 years old. He's not old. This dude is 240, 245, six foot four. Handsome guy. You're only gonna use him as a manager? You're not gonna try to get more out of him? I think this is going to change. I think you could get a match or two out of him, definitely. I mean, match or two. It, it, oh, you well, don't think that I mean, they'll make it? They'll convert him into you know wrestling full time. I, I it, well, it looks like that's where they're going with this. At least now. I mean, we'll see. I, mean, I guess things could change. I I think he would be a great addition to that roster, especially someone like Cody. You know, he wrestles. Nick wrestles a very. Uh, old school style, you know? Yes. He's a big dude. It's Very, it's slow. It's methodical. Uh, him and Randy Orton could have like a 35-minute match and everybody will complain online about it being too slow. And I would love that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? that That's definitely right up my alley. At, uh, yeah, he definitely works a certain style. Yeah. And maybe that has something to do with it. I don't yeah. know. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go through this quickly because we got a couple minutes here and then we're going to talk about collision in the next segment. But he uh, insulted Dominic. Aldis announced that uh, that the return that the return tray for Jay Uso was Kevin Owens. There was a uh, Dragon Lee vignette that aired. He's officially on SmackDown. Great addition. Backstage, Nick Aldis called Charlotte in and told her that uh, she gets a title shot against EO. Charlotte's then confronted by Jade. Triple H is grinning <laughs> the entire time in the background. Maybe this is the WrestleMania match. Maybe this is again. Foreshadowing, a lot of foreshadowing. Cody and Jey Uso defeated Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Bloodline confronted Cody afterwards. LA Knight in the main event defeated Solo Sokoa. Cena and Solo both got involved. This was a great show. After the match, he spear he was speared by Roman Reigns, and it ended the show. Great show. Very very good SmackDown. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Go watch it on demand. When we come back, Hog My Collision and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live. Here on Sports Byline, let's talk about Collision. Last night's Collision. I had a party at my house. We're all watching this. They did not do the cold open. The Saturday night's main event cold open. Which was interesting. I like those cold opens, but you know what's been funny? You know, they first started off like very fiery hot, right? Everybody was doing the pro wrestler promo in the beginning. And then it kind of turned into like regular backstage interviews with like no umph behind it. I think all of those initial promos need to be fired up, screaming at me. I want to be yelled at by these people. I want to be pointed at. I want to be looked at. I want John Moxley terrifying me. 
but it kind of it kind of rolled back. Like when FTR was doing it, they're more subtle. Uh, Ricky was more subtle the last couple of weeks. So I don't know if they scrapped this or or it just wasn't working. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to continue. But the show opened up very strange uh, commentary team here. Yeah, Tony Schiavone on commentary as well. What did you make of Tony on commentary? I loved it. For me, I mean, you know, I'm a little bit older than you, and I, I was I said this in our a little we chatting bit. last night about this. Yeah, <laughs> I said, you know, my entire wrestling fandom, this guy's been the voice of it in in some way. Either there's a backstage reporter or calling the action, uh, you know, all the way up till now. And for me, it just brings back that romantic feeling that I got when I first started watching wrestling just by hearing his voice. So I always love him on commentary. Mm. I thought it was great. I thought he was fantastic. Um, very much enjoyed it. Uh, I thought that commentary team needed a little bit of life to it. I don't know. I like Kevin Kelly. I, I like Kevin Kelly on commentary. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't mesh well. It's I, yeah. I don't know what it was. It just, it did feel different and it did feel like he was taking a back, a step back for sure. Uh, yeah, he did take a step back. I mean, Nigel's great. You know, Nigel's a fantastic color commentary guy. Ian Riccoboni is really strong. I just felt like maybe they needed that third person. Maybe they needed kind of a, a, a older leadership position on that, on that commentary. I, I liked it though. Whatever it was last, this week, very much enjoyed it. Very much enjoyed the show. Uh, the show began. Edge called. I see. I keep doing it. I see Adam Copeland. <laughs> I see it written. I just can't not call him Edge. Right? This is a problem. It's a you problem, man. <laughs> it's a me problem. It's a me problem. Adam Copeland called out Christian Cage looking for an answer. Christian came out with Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne, and security detail. This is the best Christian has ever been. I don't care about the in-ring, right? I can't. I'm not going to tell you, you know, 20 years ago at his peak doing all that stuff. 15 years ago at his peak doing all that stuff. It's not the same, but this is a whole different character. He's wrestling. I, I love his matches. It's a very different Christian. It's fantastic. Christian came out with Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne, secur security detail. Uh, they cut a segment here. I thought this was it. There was a lot of people in this segment. Who, who else showed up here? Because you didn't add it in the notes. You had Brian Danielson. You Danielson had, showed up. Um, yeah, you had Ricky Starks and Big Bill. They were part of it. I got to uh, tell you, though, Adam yeah. Adam Copeland, that, that, that back and forth with Ricky, I don't think it helped Ricky. I think it was very off the cuff. I don't think there was any uh, I, I think, of that. I think, I think, think it was, it was just, very yeah. sharp. I think, I mm -hmm. don't know if, if Adam was... Uh, annoyed a little bit by the comment. I don't know if they planned this. It did come off very sharp. So if it wasn't planned, uh, these two did a good piece of, you know, back and forth and made it seem real. I mean, do you want to point out the most obvious thing about Ricky? That's a, maybe it's a possible negative for a lot of people. He used a word. I mean, Adam Copeland used yeah. a word. I didn't expect him to say. He 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 pulled a Kevin Nash there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, when he when it was on the nose, when you actually mentioned The Rock, he let everybody know. It's like, oh, okay, now I see what you're doing. Yeah, that, yeah. you're right. That could be bad for him going forward. I don't know. I was talking to someone from AEW earlier today, and I was like, I was like, yeah. Uh, what did you think of that? And it was it was a shovel. He definitely had a shovel in his hand there. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, Ricky's such a great piece of talent. He, he's a great character, great talent. I, he's, young. I, he will recover. he's young. Uh, but, you know, when you have a guy that's six foot five like Edge and he was never considered a big man in WWE. I mean, this is this was a contrast a couple weeks ago on TV. Edge is standing there. Adam, Adam Copeland's standing there. And it was Kenny Omega and, and, and Chris Jericho, another WWE megastar. And he's towering over these guys like... By, by a foot. It was like five feet taller than everybody. Visually. I'm not saying, you know. He looked a lot bigger. ROH World Television Championship match. Samoa Joe defeating Willie Mack. Interesting to see Willie Mack back on TV. I haven't seen him wrestle on, on TV for a while. Joe was so dominant. 
CJ Perry recruited Action and Dreddy in a backstage segment. Later, this led to a Miro video promo. Miro beat him up to send a message. And he wasn't going to let her do what she wanted. So this is becoming a, a storyline. We're continuing the Lana Rusev story from WWE. This this is turning out to be one of my favorite stories. I think this they're, they're adding layers to this because they could have just put these two together. But I think if you think about it, this could be kind of like their Macho Man Elizabeth story where yeah. they play it out right. over a period of time. And, you know, and then they have the big, big reunite and it's a big moment. They can do something like that. I, I, I want to see where this goes. There was a Danhausen video package. Love anything Danhausen. Can I show you my Danhausens? Show you this. Look what I got here. I got a Danhausen here. He's in there. Hello. He's very nice, very evil. Did you know this? I, I did. I also know that the people on the radio appreciate that. Yeah, people showing. on the radio very much appreciate <laughs> me showing something that nobody could see. I, I, I'm so sorry. My radio etiquette is, is poor today. I apologize to everybody at Sports Byline. Juice Robinson defeated Christopher Daniels. You know, Juice is great. I, I, you know, there's a lot of controversy over the quarter spot from Dynamite. I don't know. Listen, I'm not going to tell you not to be offended. If you're offended by it, that's fine. If you're not offended by it, that's fine. MJF is very heavily involved in this. He's telling a story here. Uh, whether or not that worked for you, I I don't know. I don't know what you know. Sometimes, like I don't, I just don't have. I could see it, right? Like obviously, you see it, and the whole point of it was to make you cringe a little. The timing could be better. I think you that know, was the biggest part. I, I, I get the it. Same week that there was. I get it. You know, the timing maybe you know. should be. And they didn't I, mention it last night. They didn't. Mention did I it listen? I didn't love it. I'll tell you, I didn't love it. But I'm not. They did not mention it at all, and he didn't use quarters, a roll of quarters. But but the, by the way, that was a thing that he was doing. Juice. He would hit you with the roll of quarters, and the, and the quarters would go everywhere. Right. That was part of his thing. I think adding Friedman to it uh, on the on the roll and, and with MJF's backstory that just that added a lot to a to a terrible week in in the real world. So listen, like I like wrestling when it doesn't incorporate the real world. That that's how I am. I like that with movies. I like that with all of it. Like I I, I don't like current day events being injected in storytelling. I like I I watch this to escape. So that's my issue. Uh, but you know, if you were offended by it, you will have all the right to be offended by it. And if you, you weren't, that's fine too. But I, I, I'm curious how they, how they adjust here. Juice hit, uh, Daniel, da uh, Christopher Daniels with the ring at the end. Chris Daniels was moving rough though, walking down to that ring. I mean, he was fine in the match, but very stiff on huh, those hips. Listen, man, that this guy's been doing this for 25 years, 1993. Right. I think he debuted. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Kyle flat, Fl Kyle Flatcher. Kyle Fletcher, Kyle Fletcher defeated Boulder. He also cut a promo uh, talking about, you know, this is his time. He's running a singles thing, and he's facing Kenny Omega next week on uh, Dynamite. AWTBS title, Chris Statlander defeated Sky Blue to retain. Sky Blue's getting more since uh, being mistreated by Julia Hart. Missed it. I'm sorry. Missed, missed it. it. No, sorry. <laughs> Mistreated. You know what? That was that was not you. That was me. I'm not gonna blame you today. <laughs> mistreated. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is you are getting mistreated. Someone's spitting in your face with 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 poison. So she, you know, sky so blue changing now. So she got. Little, she got um, is this a little sub, uh, uh, like a, a, a little sub faction off of uh, the House of Black that Julia so. Hart has with all the she's women? Just, <laughs> just misting people. She's doing that thing in uh, in, in the first Jurassic Park, <laughs> spitting on people. Uh, AEW TNT title. I love this match. Christian Cage defeated Brian Danielson to retain the title. This was a great match, great main event. Christian, is he 50 yet? He's 50, right? How old so. is Christian? Christian has to be 50. 49. 
He's looking great, dude. He looks fantastic. He's moving great. He's wrestling great. The character, he's, you know, this is, it's evolution. And Danielson is the greatest of all time. I don't care what anybody says. There's nobody I like watching more than Brian Danielson when it comes to wrestling. Fantastic. Uh, I thought this match was really good. Um, I thought the ending, you know, big distraction finish with Ricky and Big Bill. Uh, when then uh, Starks hit Danielson with the, his tag title. So this is continuing the story here. I thought this was really good. A lot of people thought that Danielson was winning that TNT title. You know, Danielson has wrestled so much more. Uh, it's wild that he's now, what is he, 12, 13, and 2? So he's only had 15 mm -hmm. matches this year. You know, he's great, and I want to see more of him. I want to see that title on him. But we have to figure out where we're going here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pieces here. I do like how everybody's gunning for MJF's title now. Between Joe, uh, you got Joe, you got, um, uh, you know, that Adam Cole thing is kind of lingering in the back. They got six months worth of programming already set up, which you is know, great. everybody's everybody's no. gunning for this. So and I think that that should be Max's story here that, you know, he got really overwhelmed with every challenge after challenge after challenge until someone beat him. And Adam wasn't there to help him. And a lot of that maybe had to do with Adam Cole's jealousy that he's the world heavyweight champion. This I I don't love the the dynamic between Adam Cole and, and MJF on TV. I don't love the like the best friend story. But now like now you're able to tell something a little bit more because you're like, well, where is he? Why is he hanging out with Roddy and not there for Adam? Why is he delaying his surgery? You're adding different elements here that are that are changing my opinion of this. Listen, this is why I always say you got to hold, you got to wait and see how this works. You got to wait till things play out, and then you could be like, "Well, I liked it, I didn't like it." All right, let's see where this goes. You got a pay per view in November. You got a pay per view in December. We don't even know. Maybe, sorta. Yeah, I guess he's he's ROA champion, so he's on that card. Fascinating stuff. Going to our final segment here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition final segment here on Sports Byline. I thought it was a great week for wrestling. There was a whole lot of other stuff happened too, and we just didn't get to it here. Dynamite had a whole bunch of stuff. Sheeta defeated Soraya. We didn't even talk about this because I had no time. Uh, excited to see Sheeta with the title again. I know that Soraya's uh, title reign was going to be short. Also, Orange Cassidy defeated Ray Phoenix to win the AEW International title. This will lead, most likely, to another match with John Moxley when Moxley's cleared. Loving that. Into it. I thought this week was a very good week. Everybody did a great show. Everybody did a great show here. Um, I, you know, I'd like to see more of this. I think things are getting back on track for AEW. This post-punk AEW has been better. Post-Vince WWE creative has been better, possibly. We'll see. This is all new here. There's a lot up in the air. TV deal coming up. AEW on Max. That's still looming. Right? You got what's happening with Monday Night Raw, what's happening with NXT, SmackDown moving to USA, off of Fox. There's a lot of things happening. Not to mention, you know, New Japan's still doing a good piece of business. Impact has been doing really good TV. Unfortunately, I don't get to watch it as much because there's so much other wrestling on. But enjoy what you enjoy. Don't watch what you don't like. Why are you wasting your time? And I want to hear from you guys this week. Send me a message. Let me know what was your favorite part of this week in professional wrestling. Tweet me at Andrew Zarian. I want to know. It helps me. I get a good gauge of what's going on here. Next week, we have a whole lot more to talk about. And we're going to cover everything that happened in professional wrestling. And that's it. We're done. See you all next time. Take care.